So you love comic books, but you want it to be more than just a hobby. Well, today I'm going to be going over different ways that you can invest in comic books and actually fund your passion. So keep watching this video to see how I make my hobby pay for itself and stick around to the very end to see which three modern keys I'm investing in currently. Stay tuned. Welcome back everyone, AR Comics here, and today I'm going to be going over the different ways that I invest in comic books to make my hobby pay for itself. But before I get started on that, if you are new to the channel, I drop weekly comic book content, and if you want to join a community that's dedicated to comic books and raising awareness for mental health, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And real quick, before I do get started on this video, I just want to say thank you so much for all the donations. We just passed $500 in donations to NAMI. That is incredible to me. Thank you guys so much. And now, without further ado, let's get started on these investments. So I'm sure at some point in your collecting experience, you were just like me. You're sitting there, you're buying all these books, and you're thinking, God damn, this is expensive. I need to figure out something to do with this. I've got all these books piling up. I've got series. I've got keys. And I don't really know what to do with them because that's how I started. When I first started AR Comics, it was strictly a review page on Instagram. I bought my weekly books. I had other keys and, you know, I was buying some old Silver Age stuff too, but mainly just showing off to you guys what the new issues were, which ones I liked, and obviously everything went from there. Now I have YouTube and I'm making a whole bunch of different videos for you guys. But I had all this stuff just sitting there. And I thought, you know what, maybe I can start selling this stuff. And then I quickly realized that modern books do not sell. Unless if obviously they're keys, you have to know what you're looking for. But over time, I started learning a little bit more and more as I started collecting a lot more stuff. And I decided, you know, it's time to get rid of these. Which brings me to who I think I am as a collector. So there's different types of collectors out there. You obviously have a, just a regular, long-term collector. They buy these series, they buy these books, and now all of a sudden they've got 50 to 100 plus long boxes of just full sets. And they probably plan on never getting rid of it. But then you've got another group of people. They're pretty much the flippers, the auctioneers. They're the ones that show up sometimes new comic book day and they try to buy out literally the stock of the hottest book. I used to hate on those people. I still kind of do. But if you are doing this for a living, I guess I understand it to an extent. Try to leave a couple books though, you know. But then you've got the last group of people. And to me, those are the speculators. And now me... I feel like I kind of fall into every one of those categories, and I think to be successful in investing in comics and trying to flip them or what have you, that's what you need to be. You need to get these collections pretty much like a long-term hoarder because they have all these books, they're reading all these books, so now they're extremely knowledgeable. And if you are reading moderns too, you know what the next issue is going to be. You're keeping up with a whole bunch of different series because that's what you're doing. You're trying to see which issues you want to read as a collector, but now you are at that point where you could probably flip it you know that this is going to be the hot book and maybe other people don't know that as well so pick up a couple extra copies you might be able to sell them a couple days later or even that same day and now maybe this brand new book that you picked up two copies of and say you don't even like it you bought it because everyone thought it was going to be the next biggest thing and say you sell both of them for 15 to 20 dollars each that might cover your new comic book day, depending on how many books you get. I'm going to be real with you. Typically, I get roughly 10 to 11 books, and it comes out to about $40 to $45. So if you pick up a couple big issues on that day, you might be able to pay for your new comic book day right then and there. But then I also fall under the speculation category. And I know there's a lot of people out there that's trying to pump a lot of different information out as far as speculation goes. So this is where it comes down to you doing your own research. Do not listen to all these people who are trying to pump out speculation. And I know I make videos too, but for the most part, they're all issues that I currently own. I put them right out in front of me and they're books that I personally do believe in. I still always say, you know, do your own research, do what you want to do. But some of these books that I'm really speculating on or series that I'm currently loving, I tell everybody you should be reading them. And that's the whole purpose too. Obviously, you want to invest in yourself. You want to invest in these comics, but you need to be reading these comics because that's the whole purpose of this experience and this hobby. It's not always about making money. There's awesome characters. There's awesome storylines, and it's just such a great experience overall. So now outside of new comic book day issues, because realistically, I don't rely on that. I don't go in there thinking this is going to be a hot book. I'm going to buy this up. Now, if something turns into a hot book, I'm going to keep my eyes out next time I go to a comic shop. I'm going to see if there's any back issues on that because I'm going to pick those up then and try to sell that. 
But if you're ever free, you know, maybe a Saturday or a Sunday if your comic shop's open at that time, just go searching through the back bins. You guys have seen some of my hauls. Some of these days I spend at a comic shop maybe three, four hours. I know that's a lot of time, but I've tried to go through everything that I possibly can. And you find some really good issues. So some of these times I've even found a $40, $50 book, and that's paid for the entire haul that I've had. So to me, I think back bins are a great way to go. So now you've got your new comic book day books. You've got all the great issues that you just found in your back bins. And what do you do with them at that point? So there's all different routes that you can actually move these books. There's obviously Facebook groups. There's Instagram groups. They've got auctions, claim sales. That's personally what I do the most. I'm always on Instagram. I'm more into the auctions now. I haven't done a lot of them lately, but I have done claim sales in the past. Selling is kind of more of a new thing to me because a lot of you guys do know I'm now on terminal leave. I'm pretty much done in the Air Force. I've got like a month left, but it, you guys know what I'm talking about if you've been in the military. I've saved up enough leave and I'm pretty much out early. That's what terminal leave is. And I'm starting to take this hobby a lot more serious. I've moved away from strictly just reviews and I'm trying to just expand my knowledge and help you guys out as, as well as helping myself out as well. So I know in the past a lot of you guys have asked me, where do I pretty much sell my books? The answer is Instagram. I don't really like eBay. I do buy on there here and there, but it's just not my go-to as far as selling goes. I have never sold on Facebook before. I don't know how they really go about it. I know a lot of people just post a book with a claim, and I'm sure they do it the same way as Instagram. They just send them the PayPal info and you go from there. But personally, I stick with Instagram. There are some YouTube auctions. I've been in one before. I know Very Gary does his on here as well. And I think at some point that's what I would like to do too. But for now, I'm pretty much just going to be sticking on Instagram. So now those are just a few different routes that you can go to actually sell your books. But Say you find a real good one. You find this key and you're thinking to yourself, this is incredible. It's in great condition. Well, it's a little bit of dirt here and there, maybe a spine tick, but it's not really that bad. But now what do you do? So here's where the big next step is and something that I've recently started doing. So I'm not going to say I'm the greatest at this. I'm not the most knowledgeable on this, but it's something that I'm learning as I go. I've messed up already a few times here and there but you really need to invest in a press machine. They're not really that expensive. I think the one you see off the side there, I paid roughly $150 for. I know you can get some for less. I know you can get better ones that are a lot more money. I have a very average one, but I'm, I'm happy with it. And that brings me to my next point. So say you have this great key. There's a little bit of minor dings on it, some dirt, whatever. You can clean this off yourself, you can press this yourself, and then you can send it off to either CBCS or CGC. Personally, I go for CBCS because I trust that company more, I believe in that company more, and I'm happy to give them my business, but that is all up to opinion. You guys can decide on what you guys wanna do. CGC is still a very reputable company. A lot of people send all their books through them, and if we're being completely honest as far as selling goes, most people prefer CGC over CBCS because they are the top of the line. They are the Nike of comic book grading companies. But that all comes down to opinion because some people just really don't care. They just want that beautiful 9.8 graded book. And if I did have a new slab from CBCS, I would do a comparison as well. But I'm still waiting to get a brand new case because they did recently change them all up. So I have a CGC that I can show off. I have an old CBCS, but... That's just not being fair to CBCS at that rate because I'd be showing off an old product. But I do think if you're trying to seriously sell a book, and especially if it's a bigger book, getting it graded is just the way to go because now you either have something for yourself that you can be proud of and look at it and be like, this is a nice 9.8. This is a great book to have in your personal collection or that book that you just found for maybe $4 or you picked it up on the wall but it was still only $30 to $50 after getting it graded and you cleaned and pressed it yourself so you saved about $10 to $12 right there. Maybe you spent a total of $60, maybe $70, who knows depending on how much you've spent, but this book, if it's a 9.8, might be worth 150 to 250 plus dollars now. So you just pulled yourself a massive profit off of something that you really didn't do a whole lot of work on. You maybe found it in the back bin for 
less than four dollars less than cover price or you found it on the wall and was still a little bit cheaper than what it's selling for on ebay and that's just another great route that you can go so you can pick up your books on new comic book day you can go check out some issues in the back bins and then get them graded or if getting it graded is not for you the auction route or claim sale route on facebook instagram even on youtube is definitely another solid way to go it's a nice way to pull in a little bit of profit but it's just enough for you to be able to fund your hobby with that and just for the sake of this video i'm not going to get too in depth with it because i don't really have a good comparison for a cbcs or a cgc slab but whenever i do that video i'm also going to go over how i inspect my issues because you know you don't want to just buy it because you see it and you trust the comic book shop or you trust whoever you're buying it from if it's in person but you always need to do your own inspections because there's a lot of times that i've bought books and the person i bought it from never even looked at it and i opened it myself and i thought you know this is this is ripped or this is dirty this is not a 9.8 like you said it was and they said oh well i bought it and they said it was this you can't trust people you need to do your own research you need to inspect it yourself because this hobby is all relying on you you're buying the books you're selling the books so you're relying on yourself to be able to buy a nice product, but people are relying on you to be able to sell a better product. So if you sell something that's bad, people aren't going to come back to you. They're not gonna recommend you to other people. So really, take care and take pride into the things that you do and people are going to see that and they're going to go and tell everybody and say you know what this guy he does this he takes the extra step to make sure everything is good and that person is absolutely getting my business again and if you're trying to grow as a seller that is going to go a really long way in the long run because it's all about who you know if one person buys from you and someone asks hey where can i get this book from that person might recommend you and it's just going to be a snowball effect from there and now all of a sudden people are going to look at you as a seller and that's when things are going to start to really get better for you but now that i've gone over ways how i invest in comic books to make this hobby pay for itself let's check out some of the modern keys that i've been investing in lately so now with these three issues i'm about to go over these are all issues i am still investing in i have numerous copies of all of these and you can still get them for under a hundred dollars so the first one i'm going to be going over today with you is miles morales spider-man number six this is the first appearance of starling this is an absolute must buy in my opinion. She fits the bill for the next generation of just superheroes. If you're reading this series, this is gonna be a little bit of a spoiler for you. So if you don't wanna hear what happens, then just skip on to the next book. But in the latest issue of Miles Morales, you finally see her and him kind of hook up a little bit. They have a nice little kiss. The whole issue itself was kind of just like a date issue. So other than the fact that she already has a relative that's an established villain in Spider-Man, her grandfather, I think that's what it is. I don't think it's the uncle. I'm pretty sure grandfather is the vulture. And now obviously she's Starling. She's already got the wings and she's part of the champions group as well. She's in a whole nother run. No doubt in my mind, Starling is here to stay. And last time I checked, you can still get this issue. This is cover A, by the way. There's a cover B. It's got Mysterio on it. That's a Battle Lines variant. That one's not selling for as much, but this one, I'm, last time I looked, is still selling for roughly $40 to $45, maybe even a little bit less. Probably won't be near mint, but in my opinion, if it's a near mint, you can definitely get this for around $50 or less. Make sure you pick up one and don't miss out when it comes around. But the next one I'm going to be going over with is we've got Venom number nine. This is cover A, and this is the first appearance of Dylan Brock, Eddie Brock's son. If you're reading this series, you already know where it's going. You know Donny Cates is done on Venom in, I think, two more issues. So I think there's a total of three more issues. We've got one coming out this new comic book day, and I think there's two more. And he's been in an interview stating, this is also a spoiler, so like I said before, if you don't want to hear spoilers, either skip to the end or skip to the next book. He said in an interview, how can I keep going with Venom when Eddie Brock is dead? Do I think he's going to stay dead? Most likely not, but he's ending Venom. That just happened in one of the latest issues. And this is the same thing that I'm trying to talk about with Starling, the next generation of superheroes. Dylan has a ton of powers, and this is still a fairly cheap issue. You can get it. It's definitely under $100. I think for the most part, I'm seeing them sell for $60 to $70-ish. Could be a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, but it's definitely above $50. But same thing that I was just talking about with Starling. This is a must-have in my opinion. 
Mine, however, is not a 9.8. It's definitely got some pretty solid color rub on it, so I'm still looking for some more. And the final issue that I'm going to be going over with you guys, this is probably the one that's going to be closest to the $100 mark. I think if it's in a 9.8, definitely if it's graded, it's well over $100, just like the rest of these. But this one's definitely coming close to that $100 mark, so make sure you pick one up before it breaches that completely. But we've got Strange Academy number one. This is cover A. There are a ton of first appearances in this series, in this issue, but the main one that I'm going to be going over is Emily Bright. So she was kind of just chilling in the back. She wasn't really doing a whole lot throughout this series, but in the latest issue, you find out that Emily Bright is definitely very powerful. We don't learn a lot about it we don't really see the extent of what she can do but you know i'm just gonna leave it at that i'm not gonna get into it because this isn't a review video she has a ton of powers i think this series is going to be around for a little while i could totally see it on disney plus as well a lot of people i talk to are thinking the same thing it's definitely going to end up on disney plus at some point it's not announced or anything that's just a whole lot of speculation but these are just three issues that I absolutely believe in. I've got numerous copies of them. And I tell everybody, not only should you own these, but you should already own them because you should be reading these series. These are some of the best series on the market right now from Marvel. Strange Academy, Venom, and the Miles Morales run are all fantastic. Obviously, Venom's coming to an end pretty shortly, so pick those up in either hardcovers or trade. But make sure you get yourself a copy. So what do you guys think? Just to give a light recap, some different ways that you can invest in comics and make this hobby pay for yourself and even get a little bit of extra spending money, you know, get some of those new comic book day books. Don't buy out the whole stock, but you know, if it's going to be a hot issue and they're selling it for cover price, grab yourself an extra copy, maybe even two if they have a lot, because you can flip that right away and you know, you're just going to pay for your new comic book day right then and there. And another way that you can do it, Spend a Saturday, maybe an evening that you're pretty bored. Just go check out some back bins at one of your local comic book shops. Check out a couple different shops because, you know, sometimes they get so overwhelmed with so many books, they throw them in some bins, and now they don't even know what they have because I found so many good books that way. And, you know, I've paid for a few weeks of new comic book days just from spending a whole day in a back bin. But then the other thing is once you find these books, you know, get yourself a presser or if you're not comfortable with that yet, Find somebody on Instagram that's reputable or Facebook groups. And, you know, they usually charge maybe $10 to press and clean it. But it's a lot easier if you just do it yourself. And now you can press and clean these books. Send them off to CBCS or CGC. And now this book that you barely paid any money for is worth a whole lot more than that. And now you can either flip that or keep it for your own collection and just reinvest it or reinvest it into something you actually want. And those are just all the ways that I make this hobby pay for itself. So thank you for watching my video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you don't want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified every time I drop new content you won't regret it and i've got two more videos sitting off to the side here with more of my comic book content click on one of those and i'll see you in the next one have a great day